Head and neck cancer can make it hard to eat and drink. This may be because of the cancer itself or the side effects of treatment. In this video, we're going to talk about the most common side effects of head and neck cancer treatment that may impact on your ability to swallow and eat and drink normally. Your cancer care team may also call side effects barriers to eating and drinking. When it comes to swallowing and nutrition, the speech pathologist and the dietitian in your cancer care team are the experts. It is their job to teach you ways to make swallowing easier and make a plan so that you receive all the nutrients you need before, during and after treatment. It is normal to experience some difficulty eating and drinking after head and neck cancer treatment, but everyone's experience will be different and will change over time. Your speech pathologist and dietitian have different strategies and ideas to help you manage the side effects that may be making it difficult for you to eat or drink. Good communication with your speech pathologist and dietitian is very important to help you get the best care before, during and after your treatment. Difficulty eating and drinking will vary depending on whether you have surgery, radiation therapy, chemoradiation therapy or a combination of these treatments. The five most common reasons that eating and drinking may be affected include difficulty swallowing, which is called dysphagia, pain when you swallow, which is known as odonophagia. This can also include ulcers or pain in the mouth or throat, which are called mucositis. Thirdly, dry mouth or thick saliva, which is called xerostomia. You may experience taste changes, which is called dyskesia. And also loss of appetite. This can be a result of nausea and bowel changes. Other less common difficulties when eating and drinking include difficulty opening the mouth, which is known as trismus, lymphedema, which is swelling in the neck and or face, and problems with your teeth. Like breathing, swallowing is essential to everyday life. People swallow between 500 to 700 times a day, around three times an hour during sleep, once per minute while awake, and even more during meal times. Even though we do them without thinking, Eating and drinking actually involves a complex swallowing process with over 50 muscles working together to get food and drink safely from your mouth to your stomach. Swallowing plays an important role in making sure your body stays well hydrated and gets the nutrition it needs to reduce the risk of infection, help you recover more quickly and keep your strength and energy levels up. Swallowing also keeps you safe by making sure food and drinks don't go down the wrong way into your lungs, which may cause a chest infection or pneumonia. Being able to swallow confidently is also so important in helping you to continue enjoying your life and social time with family and friends. Difficulty swallowing is known as dysphagia. People with dysphagia may feel like they're coughing or choking when trying to eat or drink, or that food and drinks are getting stuck in their mouth or throat, or going down the wrong way. Other signs of dysphagia include shortness of breath during or after eating and drinking, feeling like you need to swallow multiple times to clear that food or drinks from your throat, and also taking longer than usual to finish a meal. Swallowing can also be difficult if you have mouth ulcers or a dry mouth that make chewing difficult, especially when that food is dry or crunchy. Swallowing may also be affected if you've had teeth removed, making chewing food even harder. Everyone's situation will be slightly different. If you are having any trouble swallowing at all, or if swallowing makes you cough, speak to your speech pathologist to get help. And if you are losing weight because you can't eat well, speak to your dietitian who can really help. There are different tests that look at how well you swallow food and drinks. 
Your speech pathologist might suggest you do a swallowing test to help them see how food and drink moves down your mouth and throat while you swallow. This helps work out what are the safest and the easiest foods and drinks for you to manage before, during and after your treatment and what strategies and swallowing exercises will be best for you. The swallowing tests that your speech pathologist may suggest are called either a video fluoroscopy or modified barium swallow. This is a special real-time form of x-ray that looks at how you swallow different foods and drinks that are mixed with barium. The barium makes the food and liquid show up on the x-ray. Secondly, a fibre optic endoscopic evaluation of swallowing, or FEES for short, is a test where your speech pathologist will look through a camera that is inserted up through your nose to see what is happening in your throat when you swallow. Here are some tips on how to swallow safely when eating. Firstly, make sure you're sitting upright in a straight back chair during and after your meal. Try not to talk and eat at the same time. Take small bites of food. Add extra sauce, gravy or custards to moisten them. Have a drink with every couple of bites to help you clear your throat and flush food to the stomach. And at the end of the meal, check that the inside of your mouth is clear. Try and avoid foods that are dry or crumbly, or foods that scratch or irritate a sore mouth or throat, like vinegar, chips and toast. It's also best not to eat or drink in bed, or when you're tired or you're drowsy. Most patients with head and neck cancer who have radiation therapy or a combination of radiation therapy and chemotherapy will be encouraged by their cancer care team to follow a mouth care routine to make it as safe and easy as possible before eating and drinking. Your cancer care team, including the dentist, the speech pathologist and nurse, will plan a mouth care routine that's right for you, which may include mouthwashes, taking your prescribed pain relief medications, particularly before meals, to minimise the pain when swallowing, and also optional is using a mouth spray. Your team may also recommend using a saline nebulizer mask to moisten your mouth and throat and reduce any of that thick saliva. If you are having radiation therapy, your speech pathologist will be responsible for helping you follow your mouth care routine to keep you eating and drinking and moving those swallowing muscles for as long as it's comfortable for you. Your speech pathologist may also give you swallowing exercises to help stretch and strengthen those muscles in your mouth and your throat. Swallowing exercises can help keep you eating and drinking to prevent weight loss and also dehydration and reduce the chance of food and drinks going down the wrong way to your lungs. Remember that everyone is different, so it's important to always follow the recommendations given to you by your team. Pain on swallowing can be because of surgery or a combination of radiation therapy and chemoradiation therapy. It's important to remember to take your pain relief medication as prescribed before your meals to make eating and drinking much more comfortable. Difficulty opening your mouth fully is called trismus. Trismus can be caused by surgery or radiation therapy or both, and it can be temporary or more permanent. Trismus may limit your ability to put food in your mouth and chew your usual food, which can lead to poor nutrition. It can also really affect your ability to speak, brush your teeth, or have a dentist check your teeth. Trismus tends to develop slowly. In some patients, it progresses so slowly that you might not even notice it but the earlier it's diagnosed, the more effective your treatment is likely to be. Remember, if you are having trouble opening your mouth, please talk to your cancer care team or dentist as there are exercises to help. It's very important to seek help early before Trismus becomes a problem.
Having a dry mouth is called xerostomia. Some types of surgery for head and neck cancer and radiation therapy may affect your salivary glands, changing the amount of saliva they produce. A dry mouth can cause issues like dental decay, gum disease, and make it harder to speak or chew. It can also affect your sense of taste and how comfortable that your mouth feels. Dry mouth can be temporary or more longer term. But here are some useful tips on how to deal with it. Drink water frequently, even if you just take a few sips at a time. This can help keep your mouth moist. Keep a glass of water or mouth spray by your bed and carry water with you wherever you go out. Make sure to keep up hydration throughout the day. Sugar-free chewing gum can help because it stimulates the production of saliva. And use a saline nebulizer before eating and drinking and before bed to help during the night if that's prescribed by your team. If you have dry mouth, it's best to avoid dry or crumbly food. Instead, add moisture to meals with extra sauce or gravy to make it easier to chew and swallow. Try to avoid alcohol and caffeine and stay away from those alcohol-based mouthwashes. There are a range of commercial products, including saliva replacement sprays and gels available, but it's really important to speak to your cancer care team about what products are best for you and follow their advice about a mouth care plan that's specifically right for you. If your appetite is poor, it's important you make sure you're getting enough nutrition and avoid unplanned weight loss by choosing foods that are high in protein and energy. It's also important that you eat whenever you feel hungry, no matter what time it is. Snack, snack and snack some more. You might find it easier to eat six smaller meals and snacks each day instead of three big ones. Remember that good nutrition helps the body heal and reduce the risk of infection, as well as maintain muscle. Nausea and vomiting is a very common side effect of chemotherapy. Something that plays a large part is smell. If smells are making you feel sick, try and stay away from the kitchen when that food is being cooked. Opt for cold foods. They can be just as nourishing, but generally have less of an aroma. Sandwiches and cold puddings are good options to try. Some people find dry food like crackers or toast works for them. And if you just can't keep that food down, try to at least stay hydrated by sipping fluids frequently. Make sure you take any medications that have been given to you for nausea and speak to your doctor or nurse about how best to manage your nausea and vomiting. Some people may not be able to eat or drink anything or enough for a while after surgery, during radiation therapy or a combination of radiation therapy and chemotherapy. If this is the case, your cancer care team may recommend temporary tube feeding to make sure that you're getting enough nutrition to stay well nourished. If this is your situation, your cancer care team will talk with you about what this involves. Feeding tubes are usually only needed for a short time until you recover enough and can eat and drink enough. Some people may need feeding tubes for a longer amount of time. Your dietitian, speech pathologist and cancer care team will aim to help you transition from relying on tube feeding to eating by mouth after treatment. The top tips to remember. It is normal to experience some difficulty eating and drinking after head and neck cancer treatment. Everyone's experience will be different. Side effects will vary depending on whether you have surgery, radiation therapy, chemotherapy, or a combination of these treatments. Difficulties in eating and drinking will change over time and swallowing plays a really important role in making sure your body stays well hydrated and gets all the nutrition it needs. Your speech pathologists and dietitians are experts in swallowing and nutrition. 
Good communication with your speech pathologist and dietitian is really important to help you get the best care before, during and after treatment.